Nat 20. Welcome back to Nat 20, everyone. Uh, this episode is gonna be just an episode where, uh, Clayton and I just chat about all the random stuff we've done for D&D. So this might be about, like, characters or campaigns we've played or just, just stuff we've done through D&D. Uh, so again, I'm Master Gage. This is Clayton who plays as Blaze in our main campaign. Um, the number one character all around, <laughs> Blazing Sunrise. No one ever calls him by his full name because no one needs to call him by his full name because no one deserves to call him by his full name. <sighs> uh, so we weren't <laughs> able to have everyone together to record like a normal de- uh, deal with demon session, so this will just replace the session if we don't have the uh, episodes for our uploads. So Basically, we're creating filler arc. Exactly. Anime 101. <laughs> when in doubt, make random bullshit to keep people entertained until we can come up with a real story. <laughs> uh, so, what would you like to talk about? Like, um, specific? Well, we talked about the history of Telthania yeah. in two episodes. Uh, covered all that. We got the basics. We did talk about our favorite D&D moments, and we barely, really, barely scratched the surface. Yeah, there's a lot more we could probably talk about. And there's just two of us talking. Yeah. We had everyone else here. <laughs> Show up to the sessions, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we talked about a lot of stuff, but, um, I mean, we could talk about that again. I mean, what is some of your favorites? I mean, I know for the most part, when it comes to me, you've always been yeah. the DM. Yeah. I've dm for you, like, maybe twice. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple times where we played together, especially with uh, Tony's campaign, where you play Airdron or Sebastian's, yeah. where you play O'Malley. But for the most part, it's been you in charge, everything. Yeah, uh, so probably one of my favorite DM moments in one of the other quests we did, which was Deeds of the Drow, was, well, not actually Deeds of the Drow, but uh, Curse of Strahd, because it went from Deeds of the Drow to Curse of Strahd. Yeah. But one of my favorite part, uh, sessions for that was we were, the crew went to the haunted house. I forget the name of the haunted house, but. Can't remember, but it was a house that was, that was really was. Yeah. It was owned by a couple who worshipped Strahd like a deity. Yeah. And then there were two, like, child ghosts that would go around the town every once in a while and throw at the home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We encountered the children in the town. Uh, we didn't know they were ghosts at the time, yeah. so we went to this house as they requested. Uh, I was playing Darestrix, the Lizard Folk Barbarian. Varys was playing, uh, sorry, Kyler was playing Varys, the, uh, rogue, serial killer, uh, drow. Uh, Zach, our beloved Zach, was playing Kava, the white dragonborn, uh, warlock. Uh, Brad was playing Harlow, the bard, and I think, was Taylor? Oh, no, no. Taylor wasn't, Taylor wasn't there. there. No. Uh, but we also encountered some random dude on the way that Kyler's character turned into his apprentice. His name was Anakin. Oh, yeah. Everyone forgets about Anakin because yeah. he's the most useless NPC who's supposed to be the most not useless NPC. Anakin was after the uh, haunted house. Was he after? Yeah, because he, was... he put up posters like asking for an apprentice and then like 20 different, like, no, I think it was like 15 little kids came to try, or homeless kids, orphans came to try to be his apprentice, and then one like middle aged dude came <laughs> named Anakin, he was like summoned balding and stuff like that. He had no magical skills <laughs> yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, that was after though. Yeah. But we went into this haunted mansion. I don't even remember why we went in there. The kids asked you to find something or something like that. Yeah, we were exploring. Naturally, when you walk into a haunted house, your Scooby-Doo childhood instincts kick in, and you're like, let's split up, gang. Yeah. Uh, so I went off on my own. Uh, I believe Varys and Harlow went together, and then uh, Kava was off on her own as well. I think so. With uh, Mike Hunt. Yeah. But uh, we were exploring, and Gage did a wonderful job. I mean... Thanks. Every you're welcome. <laughs> uh but uh but, like he did like different little like mini arcs throughout the house with each character. I mean, I don't remember much of everybody else's to be yeah. fair cuz I wasn't a part of it. So 
being the shitty co-op player that I am, I did not pay attention when it wasn't my turn. But I remember I was alone in a dining room. Uh, Dare Strix was looking around. He thought for sure he was going to find Strahd. He thought Strahd would be here. He was going to find him. He was going to kill him because he had promised this crazy priest in Barovia that he was going to kill Strahd because he turned his son into a vampire spawn and ruined this town and put this nasty mist everywhere. But uh, he, he found this painting that talked to him. It was, Strahd was speaking to him through this painting and there were like names written on it. And then like, he was freaked out because like, he's like paintings don't talk. <laughs> this is so weird. Uh, and then basically freaked him out. Uh, and so he flipped the painting around trying to find what was doing it, turned it back around and it was just empty, just a blank yeah. canvas. So he left and one recurring theme throughout everybody's arc was this st- Big little doll that was following us around, <laughs> popping up everywhere, staring at us like limply and dead eyed. Yeah, like it wouldn't actually like, follow you, like walking or anything. But every almost every room you came to, you'd see it somewhere just staring at you with like terribly <laughs> like scary eyes. I love how Brad uh, Harlow's character just sees one. He's like, nope, and just <laughs> finds an empty bed and falls asleep yeah. in it. He's like, I ain't doing this. And I think when he woke up, the doll was right beside him. Yeah. <laughs> Only Brad's characters can just do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was pretty messed. I think there wasn't much like in way of danger there. I think the yeah. creepiest thing we hit was that mimic, right? Well, uh, when you went down to the basement, well, when you found the basement and went By down falling through the floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys did run into cultists, I think, and a mimic as well, and a good bring mound, right? Oh, uh, Shamblade Mound was there too. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was yeah. like, there's a cave under that house. Not a cave, but just like underground. Underground, and that's when I was like, well, uh, one of the funnest like mini boss fights is like when we hit that jelly mound, and my character Darestrix was like, "Don't move! It can see. It, it only sees you when you move." So essentially, the entire fight, I would stand still and then get hit immediately on the next turn because it could see me very clearly. But Darestrix was so convinced that if he didn't move, he wouldn't get hurt. Yeah. The good news is, uh, being a barbarian, I soaked up a lot of that damage, and everyone else just bought it for me with yeah. projectiles. <laughs> I got beat up, swung around. I think I, I went unconscious during that fight. Yeah, you may have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I think that's one of my favorite moments from Curse of Strahd so far. Yeah. Curse of Strahd has a few good moments. Yeah. Well, um, thinking about it, though, like, one of the least favorite moments... Is when we're in that circle, uh, that like field fighting all those druids. Oh, and then yeah. Strahd rides in on his nightmare, yeah. and everything just goes to shit. Uh, Darshix gets charmed to fight against his allies, yeah. and eventually we're all unconscious except for Kylo's character, Varys, who runs away! <laughs> But not before grabbing Anakin and, run, and then the useless apprentice. <laughs> He ditched us. Yeah. That was brutal. We were one druid away from stopping that little circle, like yeah. cult circle. Which was to caught. Well, actually, I won't say because that's spoilers for Curse of Strahd, so never mind. <laughs> All I know is that I was so disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> Straw, Curse of Strahd is a depressing story, though. Yeah, so it is. Yeah. Things usually go bad it's for everybody. It's really good, but you're depressing. Yeah. Oh man, Curse of Strahd's been really good. Another one of my campaigns I've really enjoyed. We barely touched the surface with yeah. it, but that is uh, Sebastian, who plays uh, R- uh, he plays Farron. Farron, Farron, oh, Farron Worstrup. Yeah, yeah, the not human air quotes <laughs> sorcerer. Uh, he actually made up a one shot for us that has just been balls to the wall, like just great. Yeah. And uh, it turned into, like, more than one shot. We've done, like, know? two sessions. But they've been really long yeah. sessions. Um, I play Icky, the Eric Oker Bard. Gage uh, plays Omalium, the undead paladin firebolg. Yeah. Uh, Duncan plays a character we no one can remember. <laughs> Dragonborn, whose name we don't remember, what class we don't remember. And then Zach plays Verbog the half- Sorry, Duncan. <laughs> yeah, Ver- Zach plays Verbog the Butcher, a half orc and barbarian. But, uh... Small crew, small crew, uh, but we're all high level characters, and it's just been so fun to play a bard at like level eleven. Yeah. His stats, Icky's stats, are out of this world. Like I feel like I'm cheating half the time. And just to interject, the only reason why Tony isn't a part of this camp 
like these this one off this is it's because we hate him. It. It's because everyone in the group hates Tony. <laughs> That's not true. Because <laughs> he hasn't been able like it's when he leaves and. Yeah, we just want to keep on like playing, so that's why. The thing about D and D is you can't play with the same people all the time. I mean, it's it's good to switch it up after a while because uh, sometimes it feels repetitive. But I don't know. But uh, yeah, we miss Tony. I'm sure Tony will jump in eventually. He'll find a a, yeah. a, a wacky dude, yeah. <laughs> as he normally does. But no, just like the last couple sessions, we've only done like two, and Tony yeah. hasn't been able to make them. But uh, they've been like tons of fun. Playing a high level character is crazy fun. I mean, I love being able to cast animate objects or uh, uh, wall of thorns or conjure elemental. Like, or, uh, uh, mass suggestion. Yeah. Like, there's so many good spells when you're a magic user that makes being high level really good. Or if you're a barbarian, like Zach, or a paladin, like Gage, like yeah. you do insane. So much damage at one time. Like that, uh, tell them about that Minotaur. Yeah, so we were fighting a Minotaur who had like a hundred some hit points, and, uh, O'Malion, the skeleton paladin, decided to just do uses two attacks to him with Divine Smite twice and Searing Smite as well and did like 90 damage in one turn and almost killed him and then Zach's character Ver- uh, Verbog? Verbog. 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 No, Verbog. Verbog. Uh, B-U-R-B-H. Took my kill. But the man was fine with that because he's a happy dude. <laughs> Gage was not fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just really fun playing as like high level characters because you can do so much more and you're actually powerful and don't get killed in like two hits. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's weird playing characters that uh, you you're not worried about hit points as much. Yeah. Man, so much we've done. I mean, oh man, it's it's hard because we did Deeds of a Drow is probably like we haven't played it in a while, but it's probably been like yeah. our oldest campaign, and we've probably done, like, the craziest stuff with that. Yeah, well, the oldest campaign was just the story, starter set. Fandelver. Yeah. I, I just mean, like, yeah, we've done the most for uh, Deeds of a Drow, really. Yeah. But, um, I remember Rod. Oh, Rod. Rod. Tell them about Rod, Gage, your biggest mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, after our <laughs> adventures, we're able to clear uh, the first big bad guy's lair or home or whatever. Uh, they found in the closet a construct made of metal with a very shiny metal ass whose name was Rod. <laughs> Completely different from Bender from Futurama. Like, in no way is the same character. And the party convinced him to come with them on their adventures. And he befriended Balthazar, the socially inept uh, dragonborn ranger, who grew incredibly fond of yeah. Sweet Sweet Rod. Uh, they were best friends, according to Balthazar, <laughs> even though I think Rod hated Balthazar. <laughs> uh, but uh, they traveled together for some time. And then... Then at one point, the adventurers found some baby displacer beast that they de- they were Manticore, wanted. Manticore. Manticore? They yeah, were definitely Manticore, Manticores. Yeah. Uh, some baby manticore that were so cute looking that they decided to adopt them. And then as they were traveling further, some dryads surrounded them, saw that they had, or saw that two of them had the manticore babies with them, and Prince ordered them to kill them, or else that the dryads would kill everyone. And as a, as, as a side note, my character Balthazar did not really participate because I wasn't in this session. I wasn't. I found out the next week that you guys had killed him. No, you were there. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you were definitely there. Are you sure? Yeah. I felt like I'm positive you were there. Okay, I feel like I would have. I think that was when I was still in college and I was Skyping and I felt sorry. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah, because I remember being very upset about how this (laughs) session went. I was not pleased. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you're right. The dryad said, kill those manticore or we'll kill you. Yeah, so I think the two of them who uh, the dragon saw with Manticores killed them, and then Duncan's character, uh, Gamakos, uh, had his in his backpack or hidden or something, and they were just gonna move on and everything was gonna be all good after that, but then Rod was like, hey, don't you, and then, uh, Gamakos shushed him, 
And then Rod tried to say more about how he had a uh, manticore in his backpack or whatever. So then they just ended up killing Rod. Not the dryads. Yeah, they killed. Yeah, they killed Rod instead of the dryads, just because they were pissed off at Rod trying to rat them out. Balthazar's friends. <laughs> yeah, killed his best friend Rod. Yeah, I remember Balthazar was in horrible grief. Not even because of that, because afterwards, Varys killed his pan- panther. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because they had gotten into a small scuffle, <laughs> inner team scuffle, which involved everyone ganging up on Balthazar. <laughs> and Balthazar died for a few moments before he was brought back to life. Yeah. And then while he was dead, they killed his panther. And now, Varys wears his pet <laughs> panther's pelt as a yeah. coat every day that Balthazar has to see. You're unconscious, my dad. Okay, well, that's close to dead again. Yeah. Oh, dead inside. <laughs> yeah. Mercy betrays you like this. <laughs> Eventually, I got a new pet panther because that's the yeah. joy of being a ranger. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, Balthazar is probably my saddest character <laughs> ever made. <laughs> Poor guy. He never gets anything he wants. Yeah. Life just goes south, always. Should have stayed in the woods. <laughs> Well, you were kidnapped from the woods, so you didn't have, really have a choice. Well, he that, wasn't necessarily how, kidnapped. He, he eventually, after years being on his own, yeah. uh, people who went way off the trail ran into him. Yeah, I guess And they so. led him back to yeah. society. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't that he was kidnapped. He, well, you were eventually kidnapped by Yola, the like main enemy in the yeah, jail. Yeah, I got dragged in, and that's how the yeah. whole party got met together. We were in that jail yeah. cell. And then Oshilus the Suspicious. <laughs> I, what's his real name? Oshilus the, the Prolong. The Prolong. But to us, Oshilus the Suspicious, because he was yeah. the most suspicious dude we've ever met. But he saved yeah. us, and uh, that's how it all started, basically. Yeah. Began our little campaign. Balthazar trusted him immediately because, I mean, he's got to be our friend if he's going to lock the cage. Yeah. <laughs> man, that's crazy. I mean, oh, man, I'm trying to think of, like, other stuff we've done. I mean, it's hard. There's so many good sessions we've had. Yeah. One of the sessions that I found most just outlandish and just was bewildered at was one where... The adventurers were able to go into, like, to the bottom of, of a lake where some mer people lived. Oh no! And they were asked to <laughs> kill some pirates who were coming through a portal, uh, that led to the eastern ocean, I think, that were killing a bunch of merfolk and taking them captive as slaves and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So basically what happened was they accepted the quest, were able to get, like, a submarine, pretty much, to go through this portal. They killed the pirates, then came back, got a reward, and the, uh, Varys wanted a, wanted the ship as a reward, but be, because it was so expensive and he was the only one who wanted it, or something like that. Him and Harlow were the only two that wanted it. No, I think it was him and, uh, Cabba, Demarcus. Cabba. Oh, Damakos? Demarcus. Oh, Tony's character, Tony's yeah. character Demarcus. Yeah, right. so, uh, the so, hat word. Uh, just some uh, more uh, information here. So Tony's character, his name wasn't actually Demarcus. I forget what his name was right now, but... It was something super badass. Yeah, but he never actually introduced his, himself to the rest of the group under like, his name. Kyler confused his character with Damakos, Duncan's character, yeah. but then confused Damakos' name for Demarcus, and yeah. it just stuck after that. Yeah. I remember there was an episode where Tony's character tried to explain that his name was not <laughs> Demarcus, but Kyler's character was like, why are you lying? I thought we were best friends. <laughs> yeah, so back in this, like, lake episode, uh, Kyler was annoyed at not getting the ship, so uh, he then tried to go to a store to buy some stuff, and the store, the shopkeeper wouldn't go down on their prices, so he got pissed at her, then convinced most of the other crew members to uh, go to that family's house, kill them, then steal the The shop the ship. merchant's family's house, yeah. while she's at work. Convinced Balthazar that they were all terrible racists and like horrible yeah. people, so they went in there and I remember they killed the dad, they killed the uncle, 
I uh, almost killed children, but then yeah. scared them away <laughs> instead. Mother showed up, killed her, and uh, we are officially not wanted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not wanted at all in that town. That was we. I think we stole that. Yeah, we stole that ship. Yeah, too. you stole the ship. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much. That was a brutal night. Yeah. I remember Gage was like, I don't think Gage really in, uh, like enjoyed role playing no, that. I enjoyed it. I just <laughs> was not expecting that at all to happen. <laughs> all because this this lady would not. Yeah. Balzar didn't like her either, to be honest, because she wouldn't sell him something he couldn't remember. But I think he wanted to enchant them. So she said she didn't do that, and that really yeah. pissed him off. <laughs> but uh, that size the point is like, I don't know why that was the choice. I remember Tony and. Uh, Duncan's characters were like, what are you doing? Yeah. What do you mean you killed a family? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> and we yeah. ended up stealing the ship, almost killing some guards on the way too. <laughs> but the cool thing is we got a uh, uh, ship that can go underwater. Yeah. How dope is that, right? Which almost sucked a couple of times <laughs> in the next episode or two, I think. Because we didn't know how to fucking take care yeah. of it. <laughs> then we're turning to Bork and Orcs. <laughs> yeah. Bork yeah, that, was, that was the same ship. Yeah, same yeah, ship. Then we yeah. set on fire several times yeah. in our were dwarf forms. Were dwarf wolves. Were dwarf wolf forms. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we did some outlandish stuff in that campaign. Yeah. Jeez. Oh man, another really good campaign that we've been a part of is uh, uh, uh which one am I thinking of? It's my own. That's right. The oh, one I'm doing. Yeah, you're I'm thinking just, we're a part of, but I mean, like, I DM'd it. It's yeah. called Hunt of the Necromancer, and I, like, I built this whole little world for it. Uh, we haven't gotten far in that one, but that one was Gage played a whinge nasty named Brother Whisper, who was a part of a religious group, <laughs> a cult, uh, <laughs> but called the Sky Seekers. Um, Zach played a Gith Yankee, uh, cleric, Tempest cleric. And which makes no sense if you look at the history of Get the Yankee, but whatever. Uh, we both decided up whatever. Yeah. And uh, Kyler plays a, a gnome. gnome with fake uh, cripple problems. Yeah. He rides on a dire wolf. Uh, and Brad plays a human monk named Jex. And then our other friend, Taylor, she plays a triton. Who she's convinced is a slug person, despite <laughs> several attempts at me explaining that they're just like blue people, but whatever. Um, but I mean, we didn't do a lot in that campaign. Like we barely got through it. But like, one of like the most fun moments I can think of, like, and I'm just like do it, watching this as a DM is I take them to a, a tavern basically, <laughs> and I just introduce them to this random waitress who, who offers them this side quest, <laughs> and he's, he's just like. She's like, we haven't had our shipment of wine in quite some time from the Red Wine Settlement just to the east. And then she's like, oh, there's a reward if you guys can find it. And they they go along this path, traveling. Everything seems fine. They encounter a scarecrow uh, that, like, they walk up to. And they're like, mm, this scarecrow is, like, I think it was I think it was you who wrote the perception check. But you went yeah. over it because you realized it was moving. It was, like, from the Monster Man, one of those scarecrows is talking to them. And then they're like, I honestly thought they were going to kill this thing. But then they had, like, a gentle conversation <laughs> instead. But the scarecrow's like, can I just go about my business, please? <laughs> but uh, that's not even the good part is because they eventually did find the missing settle, uh, uh, missing uh, shipment. Uh, the wagon was tipped over. Some dude was missing both his legs. <laughs> he was co- bleeding out, and he was like, I've been attacked by goblins. Please take me back to, to Tengoku. Uh, not Tengoku. To Flower City, the place they had, they were at, where they got the side quest. And I think they, they were like, where's the wine? <laughs> and this guy's like, no legs, bleeding out. And he's like, you can have it all, please. Uh, eventually, they pile it up in this car. They drove it back. And for the next half hour, they tried to convince me that the the guy who had no legs and the random waitress were clearly in love. And um, even though I had mentioned several times the guy with no legs uh, was married <laughs> in Red Wine Settlement and had a loving relationship with two kids. But no, he was totally in love with that waitress. Yeah. And it got to the point where I had to just convince him that he was totally having an affair with this waitress <laughs> that he often brought shipments of wine to. <laughs> that was like that was supposed to be like a ten minute like mini thing. Yeah, it and ended it, up being like two hours. Now. It that was one of my favorite things from your campaign. So yeah, like, that was crazy. Like yeah. I, I, I didn't even give that guy a name, yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> just ended up having this whole backstory. 
uh, man, DMing, um, I really enjoy uh, being the dungeon master. I think it, it can be almost more entertaining because you don't suffer the consequences <laughs> for your stupid actions that your party takes most of the well, time. Well, you kind of do because... You have to deal with it. You have to deal with the actions <laughs> they do, which means having to deal with, like, the crew stealing a ship and killing all the random <laughs> family or, like, stuff like that. Or... Well, actually, this... Like, a deal with humans, you guys have been really good, like, with, and have been, like, saying, like, perfectly on track, pretty much. I, I have, uh, man, we haven't really talked about that at all on these things. Yeah, we should actually talk about that. <laughs> I think we should. Yeah. Um, because there's been a lot of good moments in yeah. deals with a demon and a diamond distinction. Yeah. But, uh, I, I just, th- I like how we're such a well varied, like, mm. party. Yeah. I mean, we have a monk, we have a sorcerer. We have uh, a cleric, we have a fighter, we have a uh, ranger. Was he a ranger? Lazarus? Yeah, he's a ranger. He's yeah. a ranger, yeah. Um, but I mean, like, I just like that. Like, we got everything we need, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, I think we've handled a lot of social interactions, like, pretty well. Mm-hmm. While, like, putting up characters with, like, so many different personalities. But yeah. it hasn't been, like, our old campaigns where we just murder. <laughs> basically <laughs> murder everyone yeah. and ruin everything. Yeah. It's, yeah, but uh, it's been tons of fun. I really like it. It's been fun playing plays, the uncaring explorer. Yeah. And I've really, I think, I don't want to pick favorites, <laughs> but, like, the the party member I think Blaze likes and respects the most is Brian. Yeah. I mean, they, like, he thinks Faron is uh really weird, sketchy. real sketchy, yeah. real weird. He doesn't like Aylerndale because he's stupid. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, why on earth are you transporting yourself into an army? That makes no sense. <laughs> You're gonna die! <laughs> and especially after we went through that whole debacle of trying to sneak into the king's place and oh, we yeah. just yeah. botched that session. <laughs> Tony and I messed that up big time. But Ryan is the one who's like been the most consistent, like, uh, I'm going to do this, and then he does it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think Blaze respects him the most. It's just, I, there's not a single character in that campaign I don't like. Yeah, I love all of your characters so much. Yeah. They're all so good. And, like, all of the bastards you've made for them have been so good, as well as, like, the stuff you've talked to me about wanting to do as well. Yeah, we haven't had much chance to explore the backstories yet. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they'll come up, like, in due yeah, time. Some of them will come up real soon. Some of them not as much. Uh, but I can definitely like tell that Faron, his time is coming. I yeah. mean, there's been hints. We were on that ship, traveling from like desert ship to desert ship, and yeah. like there was a moment where we kind of brushed on his past. Yeah, like and he, then later we brushed up on it again. Yeah, like on the ships, you guys, uh, he recognized one one of the owners of the ship as someone who uh helped him out on his journey earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you saw like a devil-looking dude in one of the previous one of the, one of the on like in the episode like thirteen or something that only he could see, right? That was talk that yeah. smile at him. Yeah, and like gave the number like short of the num- number four. Yeah, it's it, it's it, it, it's it's he's a cool character. I can tell yeah. that he split personality. Yeah, that's my theory. Like I think that a lot of people, if they're watching, <laughs> they just. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't know anything about Farron, yeah. character and out of character. I my theory is that he has split personality disorder, uh, and I'm 100 percent on board with the theory that he is a human. <laughs> like I definitely think that's a thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mostly because of that weird awkward silence when when Zix Krieger, Krieger. Him, Zix Krieger called him a human. Yeah, but uh, I think he has multiple personalities because there's that moment where he attacked Aylerndell. Trying to steal that necklace, and then other times she's like, "I don't want to fight anybody at all." Yeah. So I think it's probably like Sebastian comes up with like really cool different characters. Yeah, he has a really good character in Baxter for this, I think. Yeah. And then um, I really liked Lazarus. He just amuses me. Yeah. I I love <laughs> like I remember Zach like offhandedly mentioning like I'm gonna make him superstitious, but now it's his whole character, yeah. and I really think it's like a good. I think it's good when you're making a character, you find like that little tiny character trait, and it's just that is the character. Yeah, that everything blossoms from. Like you gotta make like an extreme thing. Yeah. Like for Lazarus, it's like this is a waste of my time, and 
this is just a bad omen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like he's super superstitious. Uh, he doesn't trust anything or anyone for the most part. Uh, he takes all those little things. Like a black cat crossed Lazarus' way, I think he would run away. Yeah. <laughs> he's that kind of guy. Well, like that same thing for Aelrindal would be Mo, Mo, we gotta go to Mo. <laughs> I thought him picking to be a revenant was bold, yeah. <laughs> but also really clever. Yeah, I like when he was making his character. He was wanting to start out as a revenant, but I couldn't really think of any good ways for it to start out because of how the adventure works. You would have to find some way where we would start after the first Shardana, yeah. and yeah. I think that would have been. Like, you could have done it, but it would have made for, like, less of a shock factor. Because yeah. something like that would have spread. Yeah. So, I think it was cool to have him sacrifice himself. Though, I think that scene itself, where Alien Dell uh, sacrifices himself, was just, like, none of us knew that he yeah. had planned to be a Revenant, so we were completely upset. Like, yeah. out of character, <laughs> just mad at Tony. Yeah. And, like, we weren't, like, holding it back. We were like, Tony, this is... Like, out of character, Tony, stop. What yeah. are you doing? This is the dumbest thing you've ever done. Uh, eventually, it did come back into story mode, where we're like, oh, okay, it was all planned. Yeah. I mean, halfway through that, we were like, this has got to be staged. Tony's not this stupid. <laughs> not all the time, anyway. But uh, that's the last time Blaze is ever going to let Aylandale hold a <laughs> teleportation <laughs> crystal. He'll just take that away from him next time he sees it. He just, sleight of hand check. I don't want to, yeah. whatever I have to do. Yeah, but, um, to go from, like, sweet, sweet, innocent Arendelle to, like, oh, Arendelle <laughs> that, like, doesn't care. Like, I think he'll be a lot more bloodthirsty than he mm-hmm. used to be, which will come in handy because he wasn't really much of a big, like, I'm going to kill that guy for you. Yeah. Like, I think Blaze is the only real, like, chaotic guy. Chaotic guy. He's yeah. not, he's, the, maybe Lazarus. There are the two that would go out there and be like, okay, let's kill these people. Yeah. Ryan is like, no, yeah, I like him. Uh, that's not a good Scottish <laughs> accent. Scottish, yeah, let's not kill him. Yeah, I can't do it. Duncan has a talent. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, Farron is either meek or just rude. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Aylor Dell, before he turned, was just like, uh, you wanted to be a hero. Yeah. And now he's going to be a hero, but not in the way I think he meant to be. Which I think would be cool mm-hmm. to see if he has like, an inner struggle and all about that. Like, his methods are definitely changing. Yeah. So far, it's been Farron and Aylardale, I think, have, like, dominated character development. At the beginning. Yeah, I think so. I I mean, like, it's natural. Like, eventually it'll transition to, like, some... Now that Torian is in it, I think, like, Blaze might have some history coming up, because they're old friends. Uh, Ryan, like, has slowly shown, like, his affinity to Mm -hmm. killing people who are mean to kids. So I'm sure that will come up. Yeah. Especially with Shabbatah. Yeah, I've got some good stuff coming for Ryan. uh, Yeah. And then few episodes. Lazarus will have his moment. And then who knows? Maybe we'll give Stockholm oh, <laughs> our wolf a backstory. Yeah. Uh, unless Tony kills that dog, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just natural where some characters dominate certain arcs of yeah. the story. Yeah. Like, you see that in any campaign or, like, famous podcast campaign. Like, yeah. there's... It, yeah, everyone has their moment, right? Yeah, like, it has to do with the characters' backstories and, like, where they are in the story and quest. Because a, a life like is definitely geographic. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know. It'll be it'll be fun, because there's still so much to go. I mean, we, we, like, we're not even halfway. No, not even close. Not even close, yeah. So there's more to come. And it'll be fun to see how it all plays out. Yeah. And I just want to say now, uh, if the marble, if, uh, Illendal had thrown a different marble. It could have done so much differently. Like, it could have just killed this entire campaign. It was all dependent on that one roll. Yeah. I look back, and I, I, thinking about it, Gage probably was super nervous. I was, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I think before that session happened, I was upstairs talking to Tony, and was like, like, I know you have these marbles. You can throw them. Just know it could make a bunch of shit happen that could, like, and that twenty's canceled. Yeah, that's <laughs> it, like make huge changes to uh, deal with demons. Leave it to Tony to like not even an hour later be like, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do it anyway. Fuck it. <laughs> same with same guy who put a fire dragon marble inside a bag to mess with uh, Pharaoh. I also kind of gave the idea of using the marbles soon because he said he hadn't even thought of using the marbles before when we were talking before. I don't think he actually thought they were weapons. Yeah. I thought yeah. he just did, like, random stuff, like smoke pellets or 
turn Blaze blind. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think until you brought it up to him that he thought you could be used as like yeah. maybe one of these is a fireball, maybe one of these is speak word kill. The, yeah, exactly. Like magical yeah. incantation. Yeah. I think stuff like that is really cool, and I'm glad you gave it like a D20, like you yeah. gave a bunch of marbles, otherwise it'd be gone like that, right? Yeah. So I think like just like the randomness makes it for like it's like fun to use, but you're also like the moment like should I yeah. should I touch this? Like if I throw this, will it make a snap sound and will everyone die? Will half the people die? <laughs> <laughs> is Ant-Man going to have to crawl up Thanos' ass and expand <laughs> to save the universe? Who knows? Throw that marble. <laughs> or like potions that are all labeled the same and one of, but yeah. they all do different things, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that's... It, it, it makes for like a fun like little mechanic that you can use. Yeah. But also, you're not willing to abuse. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm glad he used that bread marble in the situation you did because there's a moment where you could have thrown that we're all in like a five foot room yeah. and some giant fire dragon comes out and we're all burned to death yeah like you you don't think of that stuff till afterwards where you're like glad i was in the castle with uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. well you actually gave me the idea for the fire dragon because initially it was just going to be like a powerful fireball mm -hmm. but during the session you said well, maybe when this when he throws this marble, a fucking dragon will just appear. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, that's a good idea. I remember because I was genuinely disappointed yeah. in Tony. I was like, Tony, why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> that's not Elendil. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> Me and my big mouth got us a fucking fire dragon. At least it wasn't a real dragon. That yeah. could have been a chore. Yeah, it was just like the one in Fellowship of the Ring at the beginning of the party. Oh, this will be a night to yeah. remember. Very well, keep your secrets. <laughs> uh, so I, th I think that's where we'll leave off for this just random like, discussion episode of Nat 20. I hope next time we do this, we can have a couple of other guys show up. Yeah, I think we definitely will be able to. Yeah, it'll be yeah. fun. Yeah. So, once again, thanks for listening, and this is Nat 20.